What's up, everybody? Um, those of you that have been with me for the past couple weeks know where I am. This is the Winning Night Mansion, um, and I had a winning night, which is awesome. I was starting to think that it was impossible. So I decided to come to the new crib, hang out, enjoy the views, and just revel in some DFS success. It has been mildly rare so far this season, so I take the wins where I can get them. Um, it was a fun night. Got to watch uh, the first half of the Lakers-Sixers game, which was, you know, always fun to watch Embiid and Simmons do stuff. Um, I had four pieces of that game, so it really mattered. But you guys don't want to hear me talk against uh, in, in my fake mansion. You want to see what happened, so let's do that stuff. Ooh. All right, I'm still in the mansion, aren't I? Didn't do anything. Certainly did not. How about now? Nah, now I'm not out of the mansion anymore. Tricks of the trade. Fucking too early. Um, so I had Russell Wilson, Ricky Rubio, Jordan Clarkson, KCP, Bobby Covington, Joe Harris, Carmelo Anthony, Markeith Morris, and Embiid. Uh, they put up 294.8. Um, I was I had $42 in entries. I had $49.40 in profit. Full 117.6% ROI. It was big. Um, let's see here, 294. Everything looked really good. Uh, couldn't be happier with how everything went last night. Absolutely 100% perfect. Well, not perfect, but you know. Um, so we'll start at point guard. Like I said, I had Russ, as did 93% of the my double ups. 93% of 568 people had Russell Wilson. I mean, he, he needed to be that because of the structure of point guard and you know, he certainly wasn't the best play, but as soon as I saw 93%, it was like, heh, don't care about the Thunder game. Um, he put up 46.6 in 35 minutes, 4.1x. For the most part, it didn't matter, but especially when he doesn't sink you, and that doesn't sink you, but it does bring the cut line down a little bit um, since he missed value. The two point guards you really wanted to be on last night were Chris Paul, 58.3 points in 36 minutes, 7x. Um, there were, <laughs> if you go back into the live stream and see the first lineup that I I took out, the one that I had in as a placeholder, it had Chris Paul <laughs> and Russell Westbrook and Joel Embiid. So that probably would have been a pretty fun night. I'll have to go back and look at it and see what it did. Maybe I don't want to do that. Probably don't want to do that. Um, you didn't want Spencer Dinwiddie. 19 minutes, 19 fantasy points, 2.7. But I can't imagine his ownership was very high. And then Lonzo. Um, I ended up trying to avoid him <laughs> because I didn't. I don't know. There's something about him that I, like, I just don't trust him in fantasy. I've got like a weird mental block. So I ended up on Rubio. Uh, who was last? Maybe KCP and Joe Harris. But Lonzo, 52.6 in 38 minutes, 8x. He had value at halftime. Um, he was just everywhere, getting boards, pushing the pace, getting buckets at the rim, steals, blocks. Actually, speaking of, I need to look at that. He was dangerously close to a 5x5 five five last night, and I'd be remiss if I didn't check it. Uh, I finished with four blocks. Did he have five steals? Nah, three steals. I saw that he had those four, that four and three. So five by five is 5.3 bounds, assists, steals, and blocks. And it basically never happens. Um, so, you know, that's, he was in the ballpark for it. He's at least, that's, a, that's a league pass alert type thing. Um... So, you know, other than CP3 and Lonzo going off, 
uh, I had Ricky Rubio. He was 26.2% owned. Um, he was just filler, basically, for me. I had the first seven spots of my lineup left, and I was left with the Rubio spot and the Joe Harris spot. There's just not a lot of options in that sort of regard, um, especially on a four-game slate. I thought he had a decent chance to, you know, rebound a little bit. And I, I mean, like, rebound from performance, not, like, pull-down rebounds. Um, his salary had dropped, so I was hoping that would fit. But, damn, uh, the Ricky Rubio uh, experience in Utah has not been amazing. I just got really nervous that it's not recording. Now we're recording. Uh, Tyler Ulis, TJ McConnell, you know, not very good. Guys that got, you know, I had, I had McConnell projected for 28 minutes. He only got 17. Um, they used him in a little bit more than I expected. Uh, Bayless and Felton both were just under value. Only Paul and Lonzo hit 5x, so, you know, they were the on-paper best plays at, at point guard. But, I mean, basically no one had that. You know, 93.3% of the people... No one had it in, you know, cash games, basically. 93.3% of the people had Russ. So, right out of the gate, only... 6.7% of the people could potentially have this. So, you know, good kudos to anybody that did. Shooting guard, I went with Clarkson and KCP. Um, I know it's kind of weird to take a shooting guard and a shooting guard from the same team, one of which is the backup. But uh, Clarkson's price dropped and uh it just sort of popped in projection systems for me. And so I fired him up. You know, he was owned in 33.5% of my double up. So I, I wasn't a stranger to this thought. Um, ended up playing only 14 minutes, which is weird. He had 20 fantasy points. You got to 4.5x. He came in in the second quarter and just got like bucket after bucket after bucket. And then they just didn't go back to him, I guess. I didn't see the second half, so I don't know why they didn't go back to him, really. But he seemed to be having some success. Uh, the Lakers stretched their lead at that point. What was this plus minus? I don't know why he's getting less uh, run right now. Seems like I would want to showcase him and try to flip him at the deadline. But, you know, whatever. I use minus two, no shit. Okay. But still, finished with 16 points in 14 minutes. So I got bailed out a little bit. And then I had KCP, who was 19% owned. And I was on him in the morning. Um, profile of the game seemed to match up with him pretty well. Played 37 minutes, 26.8 fantasy points. You know, not the best night. 4.6x, um, so it's not a crater. But I, I was expecting more. And uh, it sort of just makes me wish that I... Went down to Levert, but Harden, 39 points in 35 minutes, 3.4x. I couldn't even find him in my double up. Uh, he was never in play for me just because of the structure of the night. Um, to me, it had to be Westbrook in, or and Embiid, or if you didn't want to do that, it was Westbrook and Simmons with, you know, probably, uh, probably Stephen Adams. But... There, there was no spot for me for Harden. Uh, Beal, 45 points in 36 minutes, 5.3x. He got out of the gates really quick. It, you know, 45 is still good, and he hit value, but I got a little nervous that he's going to do it again. Um, and then Mitchell just can't stop being amazing. 37 points, 37.8 in 35 minutes, 5x. You know, he just keeps doing it. Um, the Jazz have to be so stoked to have him. And he's, he's such a creator and wants the ball in his hands, and it's just something that they've they've sort of lacked. Even Gordon Hayward isn't necessarily like the dynamic offensive threat. Um, but Donovan Mitchell's got that like alpha, I'm a fuck you up blood in him somehow. It's, it's really cool to watch. Uh, Redick was gunning early. He had a lot of open looks, just couldn't get him to fall. 16 and 33, 2.9x, but... 
Alec Burks does it again. 25 points in 27 minutes, 5.1x. Dude has been playing amazing. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Rodney Hood when he comes back. Because I didn't see the final in the Jazz game. Okay, they lost by 11. That's still a good game for the Jazz. You know, they're not there. They're shorthanded. Kind of. Colbert's still working his way back. But enough about that. Doesn't matter. Karis LeVert, 54 fantasy points in 30 minutes. 11.3x. Whew. What was his ownership? See, again, I should do this research first, but I don't have time. LeVert was 24.8% owned. Yeah, he was popping up in my last three guys. I ended up going with KCP instead. Whew, what might have been. He swapped those guys out. It takes me up in like the 310s, 320s. I get an extra $1,000, so I probably get off of Rubio and maybe go up to... Nope, don't move off of Rubio. What do I do with that extra 1000 if it's if I potentially can do that? I might not move. I actually might not have been able to do anything. Uh, yeah, I'd probably go from Joe Harris to Alan Crabb. And that's... Actually, I'd probably go from Joe Harris to Josh Jackson. And that comes out in the wash. Anyway. Yeah, Karis LeVert. Just a crazy game. 11.3x. It's bonkers. $4,800. Needed to have him for anything huge. And then, you know, you get Gordon and uh, down to my boy Clarkson. 20 points, 14 minutes, as we said, you know, 4.5x. Um, I'll take that performance from my shooting guard. That's not the best, but, you know, 4.5x combined, it'll, it'll work. Um, Roberson, 27.6. Uh, even better play at DK. I want to say that he was like 3,900 or something. Um, so that looks good. And then uh, Troy Daniels filling in. Got... 28 minutes a run, 17.8, hit 4.8x, but you know not a lot of guys hitting hitting value. Um, shooting guard a little bit better than point guard, obviously, getting five guys to value, but yeah, you needed to have Levert if you were rocking anything at shooting guard, and he was very much in play, so hence the ownership. Small forward, I ended up with Bobby Covington and Joe Harris. Um, Covington was 28% owned. So I was very happy there. Joe Harris got to 9%, which made me feel pretty good. Um, I didn't really want to take him, but I was running out of scratch. And, well, the Rockets do give up a ton of threes. So at the very least, I thought, you know, hope for the best. Hope for a good shooting night and just let them bombs away. But it didn't really work out like that. Uh, TJ Warren, who was, as far as I'm concerned, only really in play on DK. Um, put up 34 in 43 minutes, 4.2x. Salary was just way too high, uh, and that came out in the ownership. Um, and so that's a really good example of how much this sport, like the sport of DFS, has changed in the past three years. Because if Devin Booker is out of a game in 2015, 2014 probably, um, TJ Warren's probably 60% owned, 70% owned, um, just by default. And now people recognize that the salary is too high, and he was like 11% owned. You know, perfectly reasonable spot. If you're more of a TJ Warren fan, you get it. You bet on the opportunity. But back in the day, he would have been owned like crazy just because of circumstance. And that people reacting to that circumstance is basically gone at that level. You know, you'll see that overreaction at like 3,700, 3,800 when it doesn't matter. But at 8,100, people were just like, no, salary's too high. Not going to do it. That's scary. Otto Porter laid a real big egg, 16 points in 31 minutes, 2.2x. If you wanted a small forward, you wanted it on the next group of five. And unfortunately, like, I probably liked the guy in the middle the most, and he's the one that did the shittiest. 
but just from a salary perspective, I never got there. Um, I ended up with Covington, 41 in 36 minutes, 6.1x. Hit a bunch of blocks, you know, played well defensively, um, just filled out the stat line, but stoked that I uh, stoked that I got to him. Brandon Ingham scoring the ball really well, 39 points in 38 minutes, 5.8x. Uh, he had me really nervous for the, the two Lakers shooting guards because Ingram was just, he had, he had this look about him like, I'm going to take it to the rack every single time down the floor. <laughs> and then Oubre and Joe Ingles both hit 5x. Um, I liked the the matchup for Damari Carroll, and he ended up only with uh, 21 and 31 minutes, 3.6x. So I'm, I'm happy I was able to avoid that. And then just heading down, you know, Ariza was just off of 5x. Alan Crabb, not the best. Josh Jackson, who was super popular. Uh, this probably helped me out a little bit. With the Joe Harris miss, um, Josh Jackson, 17 points in 23 minutes, 3.7x. He was like 50% owned or something like that. So missing on Joe Harris was okay with me because I got to save $900 and get essentially the same production, um, which was helpful. Harris, 13 points in 26 minutes, just laid the egg. And Tabo continues to hit value 27 points in 25 minutes 6.5x um he's starting to become well i assume that his salary is going to jump and this is going to go away but at that low four number he's he's doing the things he needs to do to get to value and this is something i didn't expect i thought it was higher um at power forward i went with Mello and markeef Mello, 76% owned, which I expected the whole day. And uh, Keefe was 35.6. Ben Simmons was the other major stud that I think was reasonable. You know, you had to make that choice between him and Embiid. Um, He played 42 minutes, 49 fantasy points, 4.7x. He had like a really crazy triple-double, like, you know, 15 13 12 or something along those lines i i assumed his fantasy score was higher i didn't i didn't realize that he didn't even get back to value um that's that's crazy he must not have had any real steals or blocks it's easier for me to look this up on my phone because i have this crap open as soon as i wake up 12 13 and 15 yeah zero steals one block that'll do it i mean bleed and beat at five blocks um, so basically, anybody you took at the top half of power forward is the same. Him, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, you know, Mello, who had uh, 27 7 in 36 minutes, 4x, just a crap night. But I played him more for ownership than anything else. And then Larry Nance, 4.7x, um, Favors, bombed. Kuzma, really bombed. 18 minutes, 5.9 fantasy points. That's a, that's a bad one. Um, and then you get down to my boy, Markeith Morris. Like the matchup a little bit, but more importantly, after I was building my lineup, I had, you know, two guys from the Lakers, two guys from the Sixers, and I had the, I had somebody else locked in at that point too, or two guys from the Thunder, two guys from the Lakers, two guys from the, oh, what the fuck am I saying? I, I don't remember. I had Russell Westbrook locked in. I had Embiid locked in, I had Mello locked in, I had Covington locked in, Jordan Clarkson. So I needed a piece of that Wizards game, and it just perfectly fit that to get Markeith. I liked him in the morning, and I had a spot at power forward. He was a budget play that fit, so I went with him. And he had 30, <clears throat> 36 fantasy points in 31 minutes, 7.6x. Amazing. Um, Julius Randle, I guess you would say, won the battle of the... Power forwards, the trident, uh, if you will, 29 and 29, 6.3x. And then, you know, Ryan Anderson, who I didn't like at all last night, 35 points in 35 minutes. Didn't see it coming at all. He's sort of the biggest surprise of the night, 8.6x. I don't think I really saw anybody else on anyone major below that. Marquise Chris ended up getting the value, which is good to see. Um, He's been steady lately, but... There was nothing else really, as far as I was concerned. Like anything below, anything below Julius Randle was a real shot in the dark GPP play. And then finally we get to Embiid. 
Uh, he was 39.6% owned. Steven Adams was like 44, so that was basically everything. Like I said, you were either going Embiid at center or you were going Adams at center so that you can get Simmons. Um, and Embiid was uh, amazing. You know, he had five blocks, a steal, 64.4 fantasy points in 36 minutes. He's been really eating uh, the Lakers' lunch <laughs> this season. It's a shame they don't play more. Um, but he hit 6x. C- could not be happier. Uh, Gobert stunk. Capella stunk. Adams was fine, 27.8 in 30 minutes, 4x. Um, you know, you hope for more, but it's not a sinker. Tyson Chandler got scratched um, just after lock. So that's why you see a big goose egg there, and that's why you see Greg Monroe with 27 fantasy or 27 minutes and 33 fantasy points. Had we known that Tyson Chandler was scratched, um, I probably wouldn't have. Uh, there's a really realistic scenario where I would have been off of Embiid and onto Monroe, taking Simmons, and and then seeing what happens with the savings, because that would have been. 300 extra dollars and five thousand six thousand now they switch so i take simmons and i would have taken simmons instead of markeith morris so it wouldn't have mattered <laughs> who gives a shit uh it would have been worse glad that didn't happen um Gortat got to 4x, 19 points in 23 minutes, just wholly uneventful. Uh, Brooke Lopez got an early foul trouble, but still got to 19 minutes, got 19 fantasy points, doesn't matter. Um, and then Len hit value again. You know, we didn't know that Chandler wasn't going to play, so I didn't. I had Len with 10 minutes, he got 20. Um, Tyler Zeller ended up getting the value uh, since Trevor Booker was traded. He was able to get to 5.9x. But, you know, like most people, I assume you were on Jan Mahinmi and his 26 fantasy points and 7.5x. Or Rashawn Holmes, who I projected for zero minutes. He got 21, (laughs) played 26 minutes. So, 7.5x. In the end, I had a big night. For me, at least. Um, That's a huge one. You know, put out 42, handed out 42, and they brought back uh, 89.40, which is great. Um, after we get a little bit more in entry fees, we'll take a, a deeper dive into the results of contests and the individual uh, ROIs. Um, you know, maybe like probably in the next four or five days or so. I'd like to get up over $100 in head-to-head entries before we take a peek at the ROI. But right now, down 9.5. Yeah, 9.5. I'm down $9.50 since Monday. Um, First winning day today, uh, which is weird considering, you know, where is it at? Today was my lowest scoring night. That's how much the cut line matters. Today was my lowest scoring night. And, uh... Tonight was the night that I won the most money. And by... um, I was this close to my highest scoring night being the night where I took the biggest bath. But, because I was already down from the night before, it's an extra half percent. DFS, man. It's backwards as shit. And then for those of you that were on the live stream towards the last 15 minutes, you would know that I put in max entries into some $1 uh, tournament on DK. So I entered 20 times into the $6,000 and one, and I was uh, profitable. Uh, What did I win? Uh, It tells me up here, right? I won, brought back $29 on those 20 bucks. Uh, the best lineup I had was here. Won $10, finished 50th. Lonzo, Roberson, Larry Nance, Hollis Jefferson, Embiid, CP3, TJ Warren, and Damari Carroll put up 305. Not bad. It was kind of fun. 
I think that uh, every night I'm just going to throw in like a big stack of GPP entries into DraftKings, just something to play around with. Um, it's just kind of fun to, you know, see how the graph shifts throughout the games, but that's where I ended up. So, with that said, 294.8 fantasy points. And, uh, you know, I basically doubled up last night. I could not be happier. I needed it. It makes me feel good. Um, so, that's it for the recap. Um, if you liked this, like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyway. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, follow me on Twitter. Check out my website. One of those two. Uh, check out my Patreon. One of those two links. Um, oh, I'm not in the center of the screen anymore. I'm down in the corner. So when I do this, it doesn't look really good. So maybe something like that. I don't know. This hand's probably not even on there anymore. Uh... Yeah, do all that stuff. Uh, check me out on the Reddit DFS sheet, uh, page. One last thing that I want to show you guys. Sometime this weekend, I'm going to be moving off of the Google Sheet and moving my projections to my website. Um, it's going to look like this in some form or fashion. Uh, fully filterable position. You could drill down by salary, team and opponent, the pace of the game, the Vegas output usage rates, minutes, the projection, I'll have both value metrics on there. You can search by name. Um, you could very quickly export to CSV or just copy everything that's on the screen. Export to Excel, print it out if you want, and go read it on the can. Whatever's best. Um, so we're going to have one page for DraftKings. It'll be joshingman.com slash DraftKings. Um, I'll have another one for FanDuel, same instance. Uh, I think this will be a little bit better for everyone, a little bit easier to see everything a little bit easier to sort and manage everything and it's going to be a little bit easier for me to get updates out and uh and loaded so i'll also at some point in time this won't happen this weekend but i'm going to put together like a an excel workbook or and a google sheet where you can take this stuff and just fully copy what's here paste it into that sheet and then I'll have some uh, pivot tables and stuff set up, sort of like my my Excel workbook, so that you can kind of get that same visualization as me. And then if there are any updates, all you'll have to do is come to the page, click copy, paste it back in. Boom, boom, boom. You should be able to always update that Excel book in 10 seconds. So it's going to take a little bit of testing to make sure that everything works for everybody. But And I'm basically not going to provide uh tech support for that or i'll go crazy um but yeah uh, i would probably say saturday will be the day where this goes to where we go to this sort of table um and it should be a little bit easier but you know let me know what you think you know we can if i just want to see the guys that were over nine thousand on dk like type in nine thousand and narrows the list the four guys if I need them to be guard eligible, I could type a G there. That'll take out the center. So it'll all be right there. Um, I think it's going to be good. But just wanted to t say that. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it. So, you guys, that is the recap. Have a good day. I don't believe that I'm going to be back for a live stream tonight. Um, just think I'm going to take the night off. Only spent a... I only got to see the wife for like one night this week and she's leaving for Charlotte tomorrow until Monday. So I think tonight's going to be uh, going to be a family night. But if anything changes, you'll hear from me on Twitter or on the Reddit uh, DFS Sports subreddit. So have a good day.